not sure if you can see down there. But in the distance is Exeter. It's Easter Monday. It's been quite a hot bank holiday weekend. And it was a little bit busy down there for filming. So I've come off the beaten track a little bit. I just wanted to give you a preview of a couple of my new products. So I've had the draft version of this cider out for a few weeks now. Hopefully it's been selling well over the weekend. And these are the bottled versions that have taken a little bit longer. So there's two types of bottle here. This is a 500ml bottle. Strength and glass with a swing top, Grolsch top. So this is a bottle condition cider. So that means that the fermentation finishes in the bottle. It's a bit like champagne but there's no cork and it hasn't been disgorged so it's still got some of the sediment at the bottom. Talk a bit more about that in a minute. This is a 750ml bottle, 75 centilitre, standard glass. This is also a bottle conditioned cider, but the conditioning has been considerably less. So I'm going to come around this side to see if I can show you a bit better what I'm talking about. So hopefully the sun will shine through a little bit so you can see the colours. So I was talking about bottle conditioning. And that's a way you can get a naturally sparkling cider. You may be able to see in the bottom of that one, there's a few dregs. And they have, getting them up here, they've been moved around a bit, so they're a bit cloudier than they would be if you, if you left them just to settle down in a cool place. So, with champagne, there's this very uh, resource intensive method that they use to ferment in the bottle. And then they take the yeast out using something called disgorging and put the mushroom cork in. This is a slightly different technique where the yeast stays in the bottle and it's not twisted or anything and just the very last bit of fermentation happens in the bottle to give it what's called condition. So the French have a term called petillant which is like a, a mild effervescence if that makes sense. So you know like with a champagne the fizz is very definite, you know the cork goes pop and when you pour it in the glass you, you get what's called a mousse on the top or if it's like a beer you'll get like a head um, and so it's a very kind of brash um, statement whereas with these ciders the, the the conditioning is understated and that's like a deliberate thing. So some people will be looking at this and thinking, oh, that's a bit cloudy. I don't think that's so great. And look, there's a few jugs in the bottom there. These are all deliberate features of this particular cider. So it's not the cloudiness. You can still, 
is translucent rather than opaque. Um, and the amount of sediment on the bottom is, is fairly subtle and you should be able to pour most of it off without it being too cloudy in the glass. So I might just try and see So this one with the toughened glass is under more pressure. So I think champagne is something like four times atmospheric pressure, whereas these are a lot less than that. Um, and obviously this one's got toughened glass, so this one is more sparkling than this one. But this one also has some condition. So we might just, I might just test that and see. So as I undo the cap, we should get a bit of a hiss. Put the glass just here. So let's see how it works. Can you hear that? So I don't know if you can see. Is it focusing? Will you focus? So there are some bubbles drifting to the top there. It's not like um, what I call a gusher. You know, like sometimes when you get um, a bottle conditioned beer where the conditioning is, is too much, you get what's called a gusher. This is very understated. So can you see there is a head. It is, there's something going on in that glass that's perceptible. Sun's up there. It's a bit difficult filming into the sun. I'm sorry my camera works not a bit better. I'm going to come around this side and see if, see if you can try and get a, a real good close-up of that. With the light coming through it. You may just have to take my word for it. So I'm going to have a quick taste. So I'm just smelling it fast. So the initial sensation is it's not a sweet cider but it's it tastes a bit like honey or somebody has described it as nectar the initial sensation is um, it's quite floral like honey and you get a burst you get a burst of kind of flowers so a lot of taste is about the volatiles and the smell. So this cider is made all from apples. There are no additives, flavourings or anything. Um, but there's a distinct banana-y flavour. So I think I've said here hints of banana as it goes down. And it's, it's kind of the aftertaste. So yeah, so you get that kind of nectary flavour, but also at the same time 
a slight bitterness and a slight sharpness and then the floral stuff starts to kick up in your nose and then you start to get hints of banana and exotic fruit and that's what this label is all about really it's supposed to be a bit kind of exotic and um, it's quite a relaxed cider um, it's one to enjoy in the sunshine that's for sure so anyway I hope you've enjoyed this little preview hopefully this will be somewhere near you before long